Hi there! Today I wanted to show you how to reposition uh, models. If you uh, want to remake some artwork, like this amazing artwork, it's from the, the third edition Warhammer rulebook, illustration by John Blanche. I, I, I absolutely love it. And one of the things that you, you might notice in uh, many of his drawings is the knee and uh, the, the stance of stepping onto something. And it might either be a skull or a piece of rubble or a dead body or whatever. But usually space marines are stomping on, on top of something. Um, and uh, wouldn't it be cool if we could recreate these poses? And there are some models in the Games Workshop range that also do that. But then again, you're using the same model over and over maybe if you want to recreate the pose a couple of times. Or maybe you want to have uh, the different legs. So the, here it's the left leg, but the other guy is the right leg, uh, stomping on top of something. Is there anything that we can do about that? Sure there is. Let me show you. This is a uh, uh, push with a Primera Space Marine, um, which I uh, found in my box. And I want to reposition this. So for this video, I'm mainly going to focus on the legs and see how, how far I can uh, get with it. So first thing I want to do, it's attached to the base. I'll just rip it off. This one has already been... So yeah, <laughs> small, small word of warning. Blades are sharp. And if you put a lot of um, force onto these miniatures, you will chop yourself up, um, which I did right here gonna be fine <laughs> just be careful uh, with what you do if this is the first time working with a uh, with a blade like this uh, be very careful because they're very sharp okay take your time just scratch away at the where the glue is voila clean up the feet to remove the, the the gun and the arms as well because they're in the way for my work and at this point, I really don't know what part of the, the upper torso I still want to use. I might still want to use this pose. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, remove the hand. Because if that's if I still want to use this 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 uh, the gun, but only change the, the position of the legs, uh, if I cut it away here, I can still use this piece. Um, so what I do is the same. Um, I'm looking for a... Uh, to make a cut in a place where it doesn't show too much if I glue it together back back together again. And what I mean by that is if I if you look at the shoulder pad, if I make a cut uh, from top to bottom over here, you will definitely notice it when I glue it back together. Simply because this is a smooth surface, if I glue them back together, it's going to be really hard to get that seam as smooth as uh, the plate as it is now. I mean, it's possible if you it with green stuff and start frying it away but it's gonna be a lot of work um, it's way easier to choose a place that's going to be less noticed in the end and that's either if you look at the the, the elbow plate uh, it's going to be at the edge of that elbow plate or and that's what i'm going to use the, um, uh, the the piece of fabric that's between the wristband and the hand because i can very easily put some green stuff in there and make it convincingly look like another a bulb in that uh, material. So I'll simply, this knife is not cooperating, cut off that hand. So I'm just cutting it bit by bit. Just make some cuts and see if I can, yeah, I can snap it off already. All right, so there we go. One hand less. And now I can also show you what I meant just now. If I put these two together, you'll see I can just hold them together and the seam is not even that clear anymore. All right, but that was just getting stuff out of the way. I got the plate away, I got the gun away, and now I can reach the leg. So let me look back at my, my artwork. Say that I'm going for, uh, for the look of this guy. That means that there's a couple of things that I need to reposition if I look at this. So I'll just assume that the back, la the back leg is, is uh, fine as it is. And he will stand on that if I... Take my plate, he will stand on that, but then the top leg will need to go more upwards. So this part will need to go more like this. This part will need to 
uh, stay the same but then move upward and the foot needs to be repositioned, uh, uh, needs to be tilted. So that means that I need to make a couple of cuts. I need to remove the entire leg. So I cut the, the upper leg away from the body. Then I need to cut the lower leg away from the upper leg. And I also need to remove the foot from the lower leg. So first thing is I'm going to sacrifice this, this purity seal. Now I'm taking a new blade, uh, an exacto blade, uh, because it gives me more control than the, the standard. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to make two cuts. I'm going to cut away the upper leg first to, to separate the whole leg. And then I'm going to separate the bottom leg from the upper leg. And finally, I'm going to get, a, get rid of the foot. Well, actually, I might do it the other way around and start with the foot because then I have more, uh, more of a handle to hold while I'm working on the foot. Now, to remove it is you can start uh, cutting away cut by cut and this is going to take some time if you if you uh, if you're using a, a knife like this and again be careful uh, knives are sharp flesh is weak the combination sucks take your time follow the lines of the foot as much as possible uh, so that you don't have to re-sculpt anything but but there is of course a but uh, there's also this this is a tiny saw. I made a video on these some time ago, which I will link uh, in the comments. Uh, this will make your life so much easier. And I'm going to switch to that one. I mean, it's definitely possible with these knives. Uh, it just takes a way longer. Because this is a, uh, a metal saw that's uh, less than a millimeter thick. And it's incredibly sharp. So again, stuff is sharp. Watch out for your hands. What I can do, I can just start sawing. <laughs> these saws are amazing. There's uh, different brands making these, I think. This one is Tamiya. Uh, that was the one that I could get a hold of. So I'm not familiar with how well the other ones do, but Tamiya, the Tamiya ones are, are pretty fantastic. I can really recommend them. And this is a, a work of patience. So uh, grab yourself some coffee, put on some uh, nice music, just start working away. Try to follow the lines of the armor as much as possible. It's not too much of a problem if you accidentally hit a part that you're not supposed to, because you, you, you will need to green, do some green stuff work in the end. So you, at that point you can fill up any, uh, any mistakes and any gaps that you made. One of the things I, I like most about these saws is that you can really use the, the tip. Uh, to, to saw into material. It's not only for cutting across materials, but you really can saw into materials. And that, that works great for these, these uh, kind of hard to reach, pla reach places. The saws also bend a bit, so you can saw around corners quite nicely. It's not too good for the, for the saw though. I'm getting some tweezers. Let's see if I can... Yeah, there it goes already. Yep. All right, that's it. So we have one separate foot. First thing I always do is clean it up. Another way I used to do it is by using a drill, a drill bit, and then make holes uh, through this in a couple of places. So first drill here, then drill there, then drill there, then drill there, then drill there. And then you can snap it off as well. Uh, that, that also works quite well, actually. Now, the, I'm going to cut off the lower leg. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm simply going to cut away the whole piece of the, the, the back of the knee. So I can do that by knife, by just cutting away bit by bit. Uh, or I can saw it. Both ways work fine. Just make sure that you're only removing that and that in between stuff and not uh, not the plates not the armor plates and by removing this you're giving yourself more space to uh, to work with the rest of the uh, of the cut as well and then i am going to follow the armor plate here so i'm going to cut straight down behind the knee pad
Et voilà. Clear it up again. All right. Final step, the upper leg. This is going to be a bit more difficult cut again because there's so much stuff in the way. The one thing I could do is remove the pouches uh, first, but I, I think I actually like them and they will hide a lot of the, the joint. So between the leg and the, and the body. So I'll, I'll try to keep them as much as I can. So I'll first cut under the pouch. Yeah, so now I'm using a, and I'm going back to the knife again because the knife is thicker. If I put the thick knife in the, the very thin cut that the saw has made, uh, I can put a little bit of force on it to actually push the parts away from each other. You can see that it starts moving. Again, watch out. This is the, the point where you start push, pushing force on top of a uh, sharp object. And uh, that's always a dangerous moment. It's also the moment that stuff escapes. Mm -hmm. Watch when it flies. There it is. All right, we have an upper leg. All right, there we are. That was part one. Let me get some more coffee. I'll be back soon. Okay, we're back again. What do we have? We have an upper leg, we have a lower leg, we have a foot. And let's say that we have a rock over here that we want our friend to stand on. Let's say that I want this guy to stand over here and have in an extremely cool pose his other leg standing on top of that rock. Um, now, this is something that might be material for an entire video in itself. <laughs> which is Bluetech. And Bluetech, I use that uh, all the time for sketching out my, my models. In the Netherlands, everybody calls them uh, Juffekaugum, teachers chewing gum, <laughs> because teachers apparently use these things to, to put posters on the wall. So they're, they're, they are uh, removable again. So they're sticky uh, and you can stick stuff together. So I can put these two parts together and they will stick quite nicely. And it's a uh, it's fantastic material for sketching out poses and seeing if bits will go together. It's uh, like a filler material, so it will take up space. So the pose that, I, that I'm sketching out with, with the material will be different from the pose that I will get once I glue things together. Simply because the, the fit will be smaller. But it will give you a great idea of, of what it's going to look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch it. Just to give me an, an idea of... Uh, what needs to be done. So what I'm noticing, if I look at what I'm sketching out here, it seems that this pouch is going to be in the way for the leg to reach up high enough. So it might be that I need to remove this pouch entirely or I can cut, a, cut away a bit of this plate here. That's one thing that I'm noticing. The other thing is that the gap between the knee and the upper plate is going to be very wide. Yeah, so first thing I need to work on is, is how to uh, get the upper leg in place, back on the body. Re remove the blue tack again. Blue tack is easily removed with uh, a bit of blue tack, because apparently it sticks better to blue tack than to models. So if you want to remove it, just press a big lump of blue tack to it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make more room for the upper leg here. I am going to remove a little bit of the top side of the, the extra armor plate on this leg to be able to make it go in a bit higher. And it will disappear under the purity seal and under the pouch. And that's just something that you will need to get a, a feel for by doing this a couple of times. I'm going to dry fit this and um, it's going to be quite hard to see probably, but 
the 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 services are, are I notice that the services are not flat, so I'm just going to file away. So the the foot was positioned uh, angled a bit upwards, and I'm going to angle it down a bit more. And if I feel and test this connection, I notice that it's only touching on the sides. So I'm going to scrape away a bit of the sides so that the foot can, can fit in more and touch more of the rest of the leg. Fantastic, all right, let's go. What you could do is glue them in place one by one, but that way you're not going to be entirely sure if the pose is gonna work out immediately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue everything si simultaneously, which sounds like a recipe for disaster, and it sometimes is, but it will give you the, the nicest pose. Uh, using uh, plastic cement, it will, it will uh, gives you uh, actually quite a lot of time to, to work with the plastics uh, and to position it even while it's uh, while you glued it in place. As I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on here. Here and now I can already start moving around to the pose because the, the it's glued in place, so it it sticks. But it's not fixed yet. So now it looks very awkward, the pose, because the, the foot is pointing inwards. But I can just start moving it around. Make sure that the, the foot is actually pointing outwards, which is a more logical pose. Yeah, and it becomes very fiddly at this point, because I'm moving a couple of joints at the same time, while the other foot is not foot, uh, glued in place either. What I might want to do is glue this foot on top of the plastic and then use it as a... Uh, the stage, so to say. <laughs> Come on! There we go. As you can see, it's just uh, a lot of fiddling around. Just keep turning it around, looking at it from different angles. Because sometimes it, the, the pose looks good from one angle, and then you look at it from another angle, you're like, yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah, so this is it. I think I got a nice pose and uh, I'm going to leave it like this and now it needs to dry. Check back with you soon. All right, glue is now dry and there's only actually two gaps that need to be filled. So that's, that's uh, very nice. No more gap between the upper leg and the lower leg on the back side. So this is fine as well. And as here, the bottom, there's a very big hole. But this one is, is uh, not so tough to fill because I can make that rip the material. Um, so it doesn't have to be too smooth. So that that's actually uh, should be quite easy. And the one that's going to be uh, the most visible is this one. So this is a big gap that needs to be very smooth because it's going to be uh, fully plated. If I look at my, uh, my reference image again. Get that in there. You'll see that the, the, the armor plate of the upper leg uh, goes all the way up to the, the knee pad. But first let's start uh, on, on the bottom side. And that, that has a uh, specific reason, because if you're working with green stuff, uh, you're going to move your miniature around a lot while working on it. And any green stuff that's exposed on the outside, you will, without the shadow of a doubt, uh, touch it at some point. If it's on the outside. The result of that is that you'll have a bi very big thumb print on it, which is not nice. So I always work the green stuff first on the, the pieces that are most inside the model, so that I don't ac uh, accidentally touch it again. Another option is only to work at one place at a time, and then uh, allow it to dry completely before moving on to the next place. Uh, but I'm confident that with these two places I can uh, keep my fingers off it. <laughs> Um, I'm going to use three tools. I'm going to use a small uh, uh, metal tip. I'm going to use a flat silicone brush tip. And I'm going to use my X-Acto knife. And I'll sh show you uh, what it weighs. So first, with the metal tip, I'm just going to work it in. And the other thing with green stuff is it's, that it sticks. And to prevent that from sticking too much to your tool, Make sure that you keep it wet. You can either have a, a cup of water nearby uh, where you just keep dunking it in every time that you put it. Or uh, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, putting the tool 
in my mouth for a second. One thing I have noticed is that if you if you put it into water, there's always a droplet of water, and that water will flow all over your green stuff. And because that it makes it very shiny, it will become hard to see how well you're actually working the, the material. The upside to it is that it keeps being uh, lubricated for a longer time. So what you can do is you can just first add some water and then do it roughly. Remove the excess water. Here, yeah, now you can see the difference. So with the water on it, it looked very smooth. And now uh, that I remove the water, you'll see that it's actually uh, very rough. Okay, now it's just filled. And now to get the same uh, pattern as the as the, the ribs over here, I'm going to use my uh, my exacto blade. I want to get this wet as well. <laughs> and the thing is, uh, don't put this one in your mouth unless you're you're paying a lot of attention to what you're doing because uh, it's easy to get your your tongue cut. So my my exacto blade blade I will uh, dunk in water um, because it's thinner. There will be less less water on top of it as well. To make the ribs, uh, simply press your, your X-Acto knife into the green stuff. You can apply quite a bit of force to it. You will get very nice sharp lines. Try to make the ribs go the same direction as on the other side. This is done for now. Once this part is uh, dry, I would uh, go back with a little bit more green stuff uh, and finish off this plate because uh, the plate is cut off. Not going to do it now because then I'll mess up this green stuff. It's, it's better to have a hard surface underneath when you're making flat surfaces like this. So I'll just wait until this part is dry, then cut off a small bit of green stuff, uh, put it over there and then work it until the plate is, is, uh, is complete again. Cool. Then the gap at the uh, front of the leg. Take some green stuff, squish it in there. Okay, quite happy with that. So now I pull out my uh, silicone brush again and smooth it out a bit more. That looks cool. And the final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to complete that line. You see that there is a line between the two panels of his armor. I really would like to that to also be here on the green stuffed part. Not completely straight, but that's mainly because I uh, failed to properly clean up this part. So there's a small nib of plastic sticking out, uh, so that makes a little bit of a dent there. Yeah, uh, it's just a show miniature, right? <laughs> just to to demonstrate what uh, what it looks like. So what I can do now is I still have my uh, my purity seal up there. I'm going to use that by making a new purity seal. I start out making a little sausage and then I'll add some water. I'll just dunk my finger into my, my cup of water. I take out the flat side of my tool and I just flatten the sausage until it's uh, about the width of a uh, purity seal. Pick it up and because uh, if you don't pick it up it will stick to your, uh, your, your, your working surface. I'm just rubbing it out a little bit with the uh, soft tool as well. All right, I'm happy with this. I'm cutting it off at the top as well as at the bottom to have some straight straight edges. And I think I'll make two purity seals out of it, just because uh, why not? I can pick one up with my blade. What this does, it fills. It first fills up the gap between the leg and the the purity seal and the, the pouch that I have here. So that's one bonus. And also I can use it to hide whatever I want to hide. So this plate here is a bit scratched and dented uh, because of my uh, not so careful work. So what I can do is I can drape this purity seal over there. That's one. Pick the other one. And as I didn't like that, uh, that gap over there, you know what? I'll just hide it under the second purity seal. Ha <laughs> ha! No one will ever know. Yeah, so purity seals 
as well as uh, tubes and pipes are great ways to uh, convincingly hide mistakes or stuff that you don't like. There you go. Yeah, because I think this here is a bit messy. I'm just going to make another pretty soon. Make it appear as it comes from under the pouch. If you do stick it into your mouth, please lick the flat side of the blade, not the sharp side. So this saves me actually fixing that blade over there, because I'm not going to see it anyway. That looks kind of cool. I think we're there. Yeah, there we go. So he's now flying. Now my next step for this model would be to uh, to put some material here and maybe fill up the, in even the entire base with some, some rubble, uh, similar to what I have here. Um, but that's, that's not going to be too hard. I mean, I could just put some rocks or more skulls, of course. Skulls are always good. Uh, and some different stuff that I still have in my, uh, in my bits box. So I hope that was a useful video showing you how to repose marines. Uh, I think this will go for any model, any plastic model. It's just that marines are uh, very common and it's uh, they're a bit more forgiving because it's all plates. It's all armor plates. I hope it helped. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.